In order to gain a better understanding of adoptive cell therapy in the surgery branch, this module will begin with some basic principles of immunotherapy. This diagram depicts the overall process of the adoptive cell therapy protocols in the surgery branch. In general, T cells are obtained from a patient, processed and cultured in the laboratory, tested for their ability to recognize tumor, expanded to high numbers, and then reinfused to the patient post lymphodepletion. To better understand the types of cells that are grown for ACT protocols, it is necessary to first examine the overall immune system. All cells in the blood derive from common progenitor cells. The process of producing new blood cells is called hematopoiesis. Each cell type serves a specific and critical function. B cells, T cells, and NK cells are all derived from a common lymphocyte precursor, or CLP, and make up our cellular immune system. Of all the different types of cells in the immune system, T cells are the focus of tumor immunity, and therefore the focus of surgery branch ACT efforts. There are various types of T cells. CD8 positive cytotoxic T lymphocytes, or CTL, recognize and destroy virally infected cells or tumor cells. CD4 positive T cells regulate immune responses. Helper CD4 positive T cells secrete IL-2 and cause inflammation, and regulatory CD4 positive CD25 positive T cells dampen immune responses. Potent immune responses require CD8 positive and CD4 positive cells. Antigen presenting cells, or APCs, activate both CD8 positive CTL and CD4 positive T helper cells. At a site of inflammation, T helper cells secrete IL-2 to further activate and cause proliferation of CTL. T regulatory cells dampen immune responses and inactivate CTL. In ACT, chemotherapy eliminates endogenous T cells. Tumor reactive CTL are administered with exogenous IL-2. The key players in the encounter between a T cell and a tumor cell are the T cell receptor, or TCR, on the T cell surface and peptides on the tumor cell surface. CD8 positive CTL see antigens through their unique T cell receptors. TCR recognize the combination of a peptide plus HLA molecule on the tumor cell surface. Peptides in the HLA molecule come from degradation of intracellular proteins. TCR engagement results in activation of the CTL and lysis of the tumor cell. This interaction underlies the premise that the lab can grow and engineer cells that will recognize and attack a patient's tumor. For all surgery branch ACT protocols, a unique coordination of laboratory efforts and clinical patient care efforts is required. While a patient's T cells are being cultured in the lab, the patient undergoes lymphodepleting chemotherapy. The purpose of this is to deplete endogenous T cells and prepare the body to receive the exogenous transferred T cells. The depletion of endogenous lymphocytes and subsequent return of infused lymphocytes is depicted in the line graph here. The diagram as a whole depicts the entire ACT regimen, both lab and patient care efforts, and demonstrates how these efforts work together and overlap. To summarize, ACT for patients with cancer involves the following. The administration of lymphodepleting chemotherapy removes all endogenous T cells, both inhibitory and potentially activating subsets. Patients receive CTL that recognize tumor through their unique T cell receptor. The TCR sees a combination of the patient's HLA and a peptide derived from a degraded tumor protein. Patients also receive IL-2 to fully activate the transferred CTL. When the activated CTL recognize tumor, they are capable of secreting inflammatory cytokines and lysing the tumor cells. Patients recover normal lymphocytes a few days after CTL administration. This section of the module will focus on the laboratory methods that are used to produce a patient's cellular product for treatment. This will provide the lab perspective on the treatment cells and also will tie together the science from the previous section with the clinical care that the patient receives while on these ACT protocols. There are two main types of cells that are administered to patients in surgery branch ACT protocols, 
and this is the result of two main methods that are used to generate T-cells in the lab. Some surgery branch clinical protocols take advantage of naturally occurring T-cells, called tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, or TIL, that originate from a patient's tumor. This tumor specimen is received and dissected in the lab directly from the operating room. Other surgery branch clinical protocols utilize highly specific genetically engineered T cells from a patient's peripheral blood lymphocytes, or PBL. These are obtained from a patient's pharesis product that is processed in the lab. For TIL protocols, all HLA types are eligible. As previously mentioned, growing TIL requires surgical resection of a tumor specimen. Once obtained and dissected in the lab, multiple types of independent cultures are initiated for TIL. The TIL are grown in high-dose IL-2 until they reach sufficient cell number to test and to potentially start a treatment protocol. The second main type of ACT protocols involves TCR transduced PBL. The patients accrued to these protocols must be HLA-A2. A pharesis is required from the patients in order to start their cultures in the lab. Using a retrovirus vector, an engineered T-cell receptor, or TCR, is inserted into the genome of the patient's cells. The cells are now transduced. This new TCR will be expressed on the surface of the T-cell and will allow it to find and recognize the patient's tumor cells. Once the cells have expanded sufficiently in vitro, they must be tested for tumor recognition. This is the case for all T-cells grown in the lab, both TIL and PBL. All T-cells, TIL and PBL, undergo rigorous testing for tumor recognition. The T-cell's ability to recognize tumor is demonstrated by the amount of interferon gamma, an inflammatory cytokine, that they release when they encounter tumor cells. This cytokine release in vitro is assessed by a colorimetric assay in the laboratory that aims to reproduce the T-cell tumor encounter that will occur in the patient's body. The first step of ACT in the lab is identifying T cells that recognize and attack a patient's tumor. And because each patient's treatment is a unique medicine, identifying T cells that recognize tumor is critical. T cells that were, are from genetically engineered PBL recognize targets expressed on all melanoma tumors. In contrast, TIL that originate from patient's own tumor can recognize some of these shared targets or targets on their unique tumor. In both methods, the T cells are tested in highly controlled experiments. They are placed together in a plate with tumor cells from previously established melanoma cell lines or with samples of tumor cells from their own tumor. The following day, the T cells are assessed for their production of interferon gamma, an inflammatory cytokine, using a colorimetric assay. As you can see here, these T cells are highly reactive. The blue color indicates the level of interferon gamma that the T cells release. The results of this test indicate how potent the T cells are and represent the first decision-making point in the patient's treatment. When the results are known, the lab notifies the clinical staff, who then consults with the patient to place them onto the appropriate protocol. Once the patient has been placed onto a protocol, the patient's TIL or PBL undergo a REP in the lab. The goal of a REP, or rapid expansion protocol, is to significantly expand the number of tumor-reactive T cells in vitro. In a rep, the T cells are cultured in flasks and bags in a specialized medium for cell growth containing interleukin-2. The rep is conducted in a special clean room laboratory under good manufacturing practices to ensure a safe treatment product. The result is a more than 1,000-fold expansion in cell number in 14 days.
Once the patient has been placed onto either a TIL or genetically engineered T cell clinical protocol, the rapid expansion protocol, or REP, can begin in the lab. Over the course of this two-week process, the T-cells are expanded over 1,000-fold in a highly controlled manner to produce a safe and unique final product. The T-cells begin the rep in dozens of large flasks like these 14 days before the treatment. They require special medium containing vitamins, minerals, sugars, a balanced pH, a high concentration of IL-2, other T cell specific growth factors, as well as large numbers of irradiated feeder cells from a pharesis product. After seven days, they are transferred to as many as 30 three liter gas permeable bags like these. Here they will continue to grow until day zero when they are harvested for infusion to the patient. Before the T-cells can be harvested and administered to the patient, they undergo safety and quality testing. The results of these tests generate an Individualized Certificate of Analysis, or COA, for each final product, identifying it as safe for the patient. Meeting the following criteria provide the final product with a Certificate of Analysis. The cells must be highly viable, there must be a certain set minimum number of cells. The cells must again demonstrate their ability to recognize tumor seven days before the patient's treatment, meaning they must release a set minimum level of interferon gamma. Samples of the final product are sent for microbiological testing, and the T cells must be negative for bacteria, fungus, endotoxins, and mycoplasma. For TIL cells that were initiated from a patient's tumor, samples of the final product are sent for cytological analysis and they must be negative for malignant cells. For genetically engineered PBL, the T cells must express a certain set minimum level of the TCR that was introduced into the genome. Also for genetically engineered PBL, the cells must be found negative for the virus used to insert the TCR into the genome. On day zero, when all of the quality and control criteria have been met and the cells have expanded for 14 days, all of the three liter bags are harvested by centrifugation down to just one small bag of 200 cc's. This final product is delivered directly to the clinical staff who administer it to the patient. At this point, the laboratory portion of ACT is complete.